you have probably heard of all kinds of ways to prepare steak, but I think we have a method that maybe is going to be new to you. Gil Plaster is the chef at the Tiller Restaurant at the Cliff House Resort in Agunquit. He's with us today in the 207 Kitchen at Main Studio. What are you making for us? Today we're making our hanger steak from our menu at the Tiller. All right, it will become evident what is a distinctive ingredient in this that most folks have probably never tried. Coffee. We marinate the hanger steak overnight in coffee. All right. It's spectacular. It didn't become evident. It is now evident. Let officially leave the word go forth that there is coffee in this steak dish. That's so right. What are you adding here? Just a little so salt we're just going to go ahead and season the steak with a little salt and pepper on now, both sides. Hanger steak can be a tough uh, cut to work with because it's, oh, yeah. it's not one of the best cuts of beef, to be honest, right? That's right. And so the coffee really kind of helps break down the connective tissues of the steak um, to make it a little bit more of a tender cut. So at the restaurant, we suggest you eat it between uh, medium rare and maybe a little bit above medium rare, mm -hmm. but probably not any more than medium. So here is our barred coffee marinade. So we fresh brew barred coffee, which we're in a partnership with at the Cliff House. Um, it's, I think it's wonderful. It's a nice light medium brew, so it's not very robust. It's not gonna take over any flavors. So we add some, some nice dried spices to this, cumin, coriander, you have some garlic powder, some onion powder, and a little bit of chili powder to bring out that flavor. Who came up with the idea of coffee marinade going with steak? I'm not 100% sure, but they were a genius because this is incredible. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm totally intrigued by it. Well, as soon as I heard about this, I really went, hmm, uh, that's, that's a new one to me, but yeah, yeah. So at the resort, we uh, submerge it in its in marinade, and obviously we marinate it for 24 hours. So yes. this is kind of a quick marinade. And at right. the resort, we grill it. Um, I think the char kind of adds a flavor, yeah. you know. So today we're gonna sear it, so just to show the versatility of the marinade and versatility of the steak. You don't have to char it. You can use other cuts. You can use a New York strip. You can use a sirloin. All of them will, you'll get the same desired flavor. I was gonna say, you're gonna get the flavor and you're gonna get the tenderizing no matter what the cut of beef. That's correct. So we'll go ahead and add that right to our hot pan here. You get a nice, nice, beautiful sear on that. You can kind of smell that coffee kind of come through there and all the dried spices come right through. Now, when the dish is complete and, and people are eating it, will they taste a oh, coffee yeah. flavor? Oh yeah, It'll yeah, and it's there, but it's not like, drinking a cup of coffee. If you drink black coffee, you'll be able to identify it really quickly. Yeah. Those, those that mix cream and sugar, you kind of uh, you know dilute the, the flavor of the coffee. Right. Yeah, so we go ahead and sear this for about a minute or two just to get a nice, real nice sear on that side. Mm -hmm. And we'll flip it over, get a really nice sear right there. Get some of those nice aromatics coming through. I'm, I'm right over it, I can tell you, the aromatics are outstanding. So from here, we just go ahead and pop this in your oven. And you'll go into an oven about 400 degrees, and depending on what you're looking for, so my suggestion is to eat it medium rare. Um, so you wanna go for about 11 to 13 minutes to the desired temperature. So we already have one perfectly cooked to that medium rare temperature here. At the restaurant, we serve it over a nice asparagus raft, and what the asparagus does, it kinda holds, kinda when you start to slice it medium rare, a lot of the times you get the blood kind of all over the plate. So this way, we slice it and pair it, it kind of keeps the blood all consistent right here, so mm -hmm. that flavor kind of mm -hmm. stays in its place. I love the idea of just uh, on a bed of asparagus, it's pretty That's simple, right. but those are two flavors that are gonna go together really well. Yeah, and then the other, the other idea, the other trick for the hanger steak is you always wanna cut it against the grain. You cut against the grain, it allows a tender bite, it allows you to chew it. If you cut with the grain, uh, it'll be like chewing cardboard. That's a good tip because a lot of people will find it easier to cut with the grain, right? So oh, yeah. that's what they'll do. They'll say, oh, oh yeah. it's less work, so that's the way I'm going to approach it. Yep. But cut against the grain, that tool is a little bit and it'll work better. Yeah. I thought for a moment there you showed up without a sharp knife. I was going to no. I was going to put you in the penalty box. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, no, we don't do that. No. So as you can see here, we have a nice, beautiful, medium, rare hanger steak. And then at the restaurant, we accompany that with some duck fat fried fingerling potatoes. Kind of another element of something that's not normal. You would think right. normally pan seared potatoes or fried potatoes, we use the duck fat, really brings it all together. And then at the end, a nice little charred onion sous vide to kind of bring it all together. And then some chives. And we're all done. All right, there you have it. Steak and coffee. Two great tastes, 
that as the saying used to go, taste great together. The recipe's on our website. Go to newcentermain.com slash 207, either our website or our New Center Main app. You'll find the recipe for this dish and more information about the tiller and the cliff house in Agunquit. Gil, thank you for being with us. Thank you so much. And we're going to be back with more of 207 right after this.